everybody. Uh, it's Michael Pavlovich. I'm director of character art at Certain Affinity. And uh, I've been using Keyshot for quite a bit now, as long as I can remember. Uh, I've been using ZBrush as a crutch and uh, Keyshot as my other crutch uh, to create uh, what I create. And being director of character art, uh, a lot of what I do professionally, it doesn't get to be seen. So usually I, you know, I'll do live streams or I'll do uh, quick demo stuff for ZBrush. And it doesn't leave me a tremendous amount of time. Uh, and so basically, you know, when I when I was using Keyshot at the very beginning, I wasn't sure how to kind of put these things together. So I figured I'd just start at the beginning, which is the very first thing I did was this uh, ZBrush, intro to ZBrush class or course uh, way back in the day. And then I just used Keyshot to do the whole, you know, throw in a back plate, uh, make it look like a real piece of art or like I really traditionally did this. You'll see this is a reoccurring theme uh, of what I do. Uh, but again, when I'm creating something externally, when I'm doing a live stream, I've got well, hour and a half, two hours to do a live stream. And then the 40 minutes in between the end of my live stream and the beginning of work, I have to do a cool render, do a, edit the sizzle video, do my thumbnails for you know YouTube and social media and stuff like that. And that's about all the time I have. So again, Keyshot coming in strong for allowing me to you know ZBrush, model stuff real quick, and then Keyshot, throw it in the Keyshot, drag and drop and uh, get something out there that looks good. So that's that's the overview of, you know, what I tend to use Keyshot for and um, how I use it, uh, you know, not day to day, but once a month on uh, Pixelogic's channel and once a month on uh, my channel. Uh, so again, we started um, kind of here, intro to ZBrush, you know, just throwing together maquettes. And it's super simple to set up. Basically what you'll need is just a backdrop. So the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge comes with uh, a bunch of backdrops and a bunch of materials that you can use, but you know, take a picture of your desk if you want to throw it in as a backdrop, drop a material in, set up your lighting. In this case, the lighting's pretty forgiving, which we'll uh, cover in just a second, and then throw in a little depth of field on your camera to kind of set it into your scene a little bit. Um, in this one, you know, the backdrop doesn't have any armature. In this one, the armature is kind of built into the backdrop, but uh, you can still you know, put a little uh, clay floating head in there and stick it right onto that armature and then put a little piece of clay in here with a little couple of rakes across it. and. Uh, have a little bit of fun with that. And in fact, real quickly, I can just hop into Keyshot real quick and show you how easy it is. Uh, we go over here to an, our, um, you know, environments is where you save your lighting. I'm just going to keep the default lighting. Like I said, it's very forgiving. Uh, in the back plates here, I'm just going to grab a picture of a desk. And since we have a floating head in here, I need an armature to kind of stick it on. So let's go ahead and grab this one. You're going to see this back plate has a little depth of field on it. So I can go through here, position my guys. We're going to go over here to materials. We can type in clay or you can just drag and drop ZBrush clay. You can shift left click to grab that material and shift right click to send it right on over there. And uh, there, you're basically set up. Set your lighting so that the shadows at the very least are pointing in the right direction. You know, so if you got a shadow coming off that block of clay, just send your shadows going back this way a little bit and then hop into your camera here, drop into your depth of field, turn it on, say, you know what? I'll go ahead and focus it right here and then crank this F stop up uh, so that it blurs out about as much as the, you know, these objects in here. And you're basically all done. So. Pretty easy to set that up. Uh, one of my favorite uh, things to do, so, you know, set up a render, send it to grandma, and she thinks I'm an awesome artist. When in reality, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. It's not real, uh, but it's, it, you know, it's real enough. Uh, oops, I'll go ahead and just keep going through here. Uh, this is another instance where if you don't want to have to be limited by an armature that's in the back plate or anything like that, you just build the armature. Uh, pretty simple to set up. Just go through there, just model what you need. And again, in Keyshot, drag and drop some steel, drag and drop some plastic, drag and drop some wood, uh, blob some clays in there and ZBrush, rough up your model a little bit, uh, and you're good to go. In fact, now that you mentioned this one here, same deal. You know, this this is a built-in armature, but it's all, is you know, it's a cylinder and it's a box and it's a screw that I uh, got off McMaster uh, car components, uh, stuff like that. And again, it just very basic setup, just drag and drop these materials on here, set up your camera in here, you know, set your depth of field here. You know, you can go through here and you can just, uh, let me see. So you have it here, you go and click this dot. You say, you know what? I want it to focus here in the foreground where we're nice and focused and then just dial in uh, that F stop to make sure, you know, it kind of matches your back plate. And that's about it. Again, you get to look like a cool artist and uh, not a hacky ZBrush artist like myself. Um, and also, you know, this is all using environment lighting, which again, I'm just using the default, you know, set up the scene, but you can dial that in. You can also, if you want a more specific look, you can just go edit, add light and throw in some spotlights or whatever for to kind of hit that look uh, you're going for. Um, <laughs> another thing when it comes to, you know, being fast and trying to get stuff done quickly and also being an extraordinary lazy artist like I am, 
I, if I need to do bronze, you know, for instance, this is like a, I did a, like a shell casting kind of previs where we have a little bit of bronze in here and I didn't have a bronze available to me. I had a couple of coppers, uh, but of course I just head right into Keyshot Cloud. And if I'm looking for anything in specific, type in bronze, boom, not only do I have all sorts of different types of oil bronzes, I also have like worn uh, bronze, little patina on there. So really, really super useful for me. Again, when I've got 40 minutes in between or I'm doing a, a ZBrush demo where in this case, you know, we're, you know, on the ZBrush 2021.5 20, or 0.6, you know, I did a, I did a bunch of demos for this one. So again, super quick, super effective to kind of lock those in. Uh, this is another instance, just another example of, you know, do, I'm not going to sit here and carve graphite on pencils. Uh, it's not my, <laughs> it's not in my wheelhouse, but I can fake it like I can. Uh, so again, <clears throat> modeling a pencil, super easy. It's just another live stream that we did. And then, you know, plop a little model on the top there. And again, just hop into Keyshot Cloud Library, a little bit of pine wood, a little bit of glossy paint, a little bit of aluminum. Uh, I didn't, again, super lazy. I didn't want to go through and be like, what does graphite look like? And I got to do research and reference. I was like, well, let me look and send. lo and behold, Cloud Library, save my butt there. Graphite, drag and drop, done. Red rubber, good to go. And of course, like I said, you know, now, now I can drop this into a back plate. Uh, light it up, put a little uh, post post effects on there, send that to grandma, and she thinks I'm an amazing uh, pencil sculptor. Uh, even though, now that I look at this, these are a little bit wider than the actual graphite, so I don't know if it's really holding that illusion that well, but good enough. Uh, this is kind of like studio lighting. Again, this is from a live stream, a couple hours to sculpt it, and then, you know, a couple minutes to light it, throw on some materials. Uh, maintain your poly paint, just alt drag any material you want, and we'll get a little bit deeper into that as we head, uh, you know, go through some of the other slides, but basically this is, I usually throw an environment light in there for reflections and stuff, but this, I wanted a little bit more of a specific look, a very kind of stage presence kind of look. Um, you can also use area lights for this, uh, you know, kind of like a soft box kind of look. And you can also throw in some, I guess these are light, what are they called? Light caps or um, light, basically images of lights that you can throw in there for your spotlights or your area lights to give you a little bit more realistic reflection. And of course you can turn this off so it's not visible to the camera and you can still get that effect. Uh, but generally speaking, I'll do a blend of all three. In this particular case, it was just straight up spotlights for that uh, kind of stage look. Uh, but here it is mixed a little bit with some environment lighting, area lights, spotlights, all that stuff. And again, super easy to kind of set that up. Um, and again, when it comes to, there may be more elegant ways to do this in Keyshot, but for my purposes, literally throwing an egg inside of here, uh, taking this geometry that I didn't extrude on and throwing an area light on there, boom, instant, uh, you know, motivated lighting, practical lighting right in my scene. It's drag and drop. It's effective. It gets what I need out of it and uh, I can move on. Uh, super easy. And this is a couple more uh, instances of doing exactly that, which we'll see in a later video. Uh, you know, so that was kind of object lighting and this is more scene lighting, but at the end of the day, it's still the exact same process. Uh, here you can see we have a little bit of velvet from Keyshot thrown on there. And, you know, just like the stage lighting up front, all this stuff is just little eggs sitting in there. You turn them on, you crank in uh, the amount that you want it to shine, put a little spotlights up here that I guess I could have modeled some spotlights in there, but since you were never going to see it, at least not from where I was shooting it from, uh, good enough, throw it in there, call it a day. Uh, this is for ZBrush 2021 uh, Prime, so 2021, the, the beginning. It's been a very long release, um, but this had some interesting things going on it too. So, you know, a lot of drag and drop as well, but also using labels to kind of go through and not just put in labels for signs, like the obvious way to use these, but also uh, go in there and grab like a crack decal and just throw that on your glass. Uh, as opposed, you know, the shattered glass, I did go through here and model that in, but um, for like cracks and stuff. Totally easy just to go ahead and just grab a label on there, scoot it around until it kind of tells that story you wanted to and call it a day. Uh, this, in fact, was just a cloth sim in ZBrush with a little alpha that I painted and then dragged drag it into a key shot and then assigned an opacity to it. And boom, good to go. Just a little bit of smoke wrapped around uh, that pole there. Uh, this is another ZBrush 2020. Yeah, 2021 demo, you know, kind of showing all the cloth stuff. But really, these are just globs of geometry in the background indicating, I don't know, two people taking pictures, I guess. And uh, the only thing I did different with this one is uh, throwing on a lot of chromatic aberration, get a little bit of energy around the corners here uh, for this type of look. But uh, again, so simple, drag and drop, glossy paint, glass, area light, cloth, uh, rubber, and I'm done, you know. So again, I can't, I can't say enough 
how, how awesome it is to be able to just kind of do that and do that quickly and effectively and, you know, get what I need out of there and go on to my next demo. Uh, as another example, you know, live stream and again, drag and drop bone, wax, uh, glass, wood. Uh, I don't remember exactly what those cards are. You know, I even leave the environment back there and, uh, you know, have a cool little scene set up for this you know, skeptics board game uh, that we were doing a live stream, you know, kind of modeling out some assets for that. Um, here, you know, I can, we'll hop back into Keyshot real quick. Uh, this is another pretty simple scene to set up in uh, Keyshot. Uh, basically, just throw some robot parts in here. It's like a robot garage, uh, and the environment's still in there. So, you know, I can kind of dial in that environment. It's not really lighting the scene that much. It is providing some reflection information in here, but we can kind of set the scene in here. Uh, back here, you're going to see we got a big old label back here. And again, label's super easy, super effective for me. I can just double click over here and say, you know what, let's go play around with this label. Um, Let's say we want to move it, and then I can go through here. I can hold down Alt, and I can kind of scale this in and out, rotate it, move it around, and uh, plop it down wherever I need that to go. And again, if I wanted shattered glass, I could do the exact same thing uh, with a the label there. Uh, Hawkeye is among you. Um, may see an extra row of lights that aren't visible here. Again, these, these lights up here aren't visible to the camera. It just made the scene look better, so uh, those lights don't. Uh, they exist, but they, they're, they're not seen. And you can also see when I'm moving fast, uh, I've got some pipes poking down through this glass. Uh, again, I don't have a tremendous amount of time for this. I'm going to keep using that as an excuse for my poor artwork uh, and rushed uh, execution here. But at the same time, you know, again, just throwing together a quick demo for Zebras 2021, uh, make that sizzle video, get it out the door, and then I have something cool to show for it. Go ahead and get rid of that there. Uh, skin and eyes. So this is a more recent live stream, uh, Crane Gang, Crane in the Gang, and basically uh, going through here and doing some stylized skin. When you bring something in the ZBrush, uh, you're going to have like a, a texture map over here that has vertex color. You know what? I'm going to show all this. I'll just kind of demo this. But essentially, getting a skin set up with the texture maps that come in with it can be maybe not so straightforward. So we'll cover that just really quickly. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we'll do that now. While we're kind of looking at it, I'm gonna unpause this. So here's kind of an earthworm gym. And if I double click him and I go in here to his material graph, and that's another thing too in Keyshot, I found myself using more and more. At the very beginning, I was like, oh, it's, oh, there's so much stuff going on in here. And you can, you know, all these textures and utilities. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is super powerful. I, I almost exclusively use the material graph when I'm using materials. I just like having the ability to kind of go through here and see what the parameters are. And if I need to drag, you know, bring in something like you, you know, a color adjust utility, um, I can do it pretty easy. So it's, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty effective. I, I love the uh, setup that they have here. So basically uh, I have this material and as we bring this in, it's just a mat cap. So you're going to see, we have, uh, you can apply the mat cap that the material came in with. We can turn that off and it's also set to vertex color. So the vertex color for this object is dialed right into this node here and it's automatically set up to advanced. Now I do have, if I go over here to materials, again, Keyshot Cloud, I just downloaded some skin. And if I hold down Alt, you're gonna see, if I drag this over, it's gonna say, you can hold down Alt to retain your textures or Control to retain labels. Uh, but I also wanna retain my textures that are with this material. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna drag the skin in here. I'm gonna move this on down. And I basically want to replace this vertex color with this texture map here. So I'm going to take this matte cap, plug that into the texture. We'll go ahead and get rid of this. And then uh, we got all of this good to go. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this to my surface here. So I don't need this advanced anymore. And now you're going to see I got a kind of a lumpy, bumpy skin uh, going on there. But look, let's go in here to the textures, go to the specular. We'll knock this down, maybe 0.2. And these aren't linked. So we'll go ahead and just do that twice. Uh, and there's our skin. now. Again, this skin has some stuff dialed in. We can go in here. You know what? Let's go back up to that top node and we'll uh, take this translucency down. We'll take that down to maybe you know, five. And now we can start dialing in how this, you know, you can play the subsurface uh, color or the surface color right there, but you can also go through here. And like I said before, you can drop in a, uh, like a color adjust node. So you can take your matte cap through that color adjust, just drop that into the texture. And now you can go through here. If you want to desat your color, or your matte cap just a little bit, just drop that down, maybe crank up the contrast. You can dial in that skin however you want. And that is all set up in Keyshot, super simple. And again, um, you know, the eyes as well. So if we go through here, I'm going to deselect everything, hit Control D. And now I can go through here and just click these eyeballs here. And you know what? We'll go ahead and say, move this part so we can whoop, 
pop these up, you're going to see that the eyeballs themselves just are just a goopy layer of uh, glass above a bunch of plastic, basically. So plastic with a little concave area, a little bit of plastic in here, a little bit of plastic in here. Now, you can do translucency if you want to, but in this instance, I didn't think it was going to add too much. So again, very simple setup, but still effective, I think. Um, moving right along. Uh, here, so this is a, I do so many Intro to Zebras courses. This is for Intro to Zebras on ArtStation. And what I wanted to call out here was you can do a lot of this textures uh, within Keyshot. You know, you can tile textures and stuff in there, but you can also do a lot of surface noise tiling textures in ZBrush uh, and also port that right over to Keyshot. So when you use the Keyshot bridge, you hit a button, it comes over and it just, it plugs in all of that surface noise you've been working on. So all this here, like on the basketball and on a shorts, and on his shirt here was all just surface noise brought over from ZBrush and uh, worked pretty well. You know, nothing, uh, nothing super surprising here. Even this foam on here is all surface noise. Now, of course, you can still do that with displacement maps and tiling textures and key shot. But uh, again, if you're working in ZBrush and you're dialing it in, send it on over and uh, you're good to go. And there's the final. And this is actually me as a uh, maybe early teen, maybe a little bit of preteen um, <laughs> basketball player, Georgetown, Texas Eagle basketball player there. And then there's the, uh, this is ZBrush 20, ooh, 2018, maybe uh, 2018 demo. Uh, so you can see the gizmo stuff was kind of new there. And uh, the final earthworm gym there. Here's the eyeballs I was talking about. You know, you've got the goopy layer here. You've got the plastic with the concavity and then just a little bit of plastic on top. Uh, and like I said, you can add translucency in here if you needed to. In this case, uh, I really didn't. Uh, for fur and hair, I don't, uh, <laughs> I wish I was more elegant with this. Uh, I guess, I don't know if it's as embarrassing or not, but uh, I brute force a lot of my fur and hair. So when it comes to how was this cat rendered? Well, basically it was rendered uh, on top of 40 million polygons worth of hair. Um, but again, that's a cool thing about Keyshot is I can do whatever I want to in ZBrush and I can also do whatever I want to in Keyshot because I just send it over and lo and behold, I have uh, a material I can throw on here. If your machine does bog down, I've got a, a 2080 Ti and a Threadripper, so GPU or CPU rendering, I'm not, I'm not sweating it too much, but if you, if you are getting bogged down, you can throw on a little bit of region render, and that'll kind of, if you want to just dial in specifically in a certain area, you know, your little look dev, uh, you can do that to kind of speed up a little bit. Uh, also, I try to a bunch of different things with hair and I end like, you know, some metallic stuff and isotropic stuff. And I ended up just settling right back on uh, my hair, my skin. I basically use that for everything now. So uh, I just used the skin shader for this and uh, dialed in some settings and called it a day. It worked okay for me. Uh, here's another version of uh, another thing of hair. Isn't it? It's kind of rough. Uh, I didn't, again, limited time on my live streams, send it on over, call it a day. But at the end of the day, you know, this is death from regular show. And uh, you can see we got some hair dialed in here. This is all Keyshot, by the way. It's all, all Keyshot rendered. We have a little turnaround on that at the end. Um, you can also do you geometry nodes in Keyshot. You can dial in some fuzz. You can get a little bit of a Muppet look or a towel look, uh, you know, kind of depending on what you're looking for. So again, this is more of a Muppet look. And I actually ended up using this in the final render because he's kind of a weird looking dude. So I figured Muppet hair wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for him. But... Um, Speaking of geometry nodes, uh, this is another blast from the past. If I go through here, I did a long time ago, maybe four or five years ago, uh, key, key shot and ZBrush bridge quick start. Um, it's a little bit dated, but I guess all the stuff is there. I did this uh, again for Threadripper uh, way back in the day. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, all you really need to do, this is kind of back when you had to separate out like the front of the liquid and the top of the liquid that was, you know, the, the part that was touching the liquid in the glass, you had to separate that model out. Nowadays, all you have to do is, let's hop back in the presentation over here. Nowadays, all you have to do is you can put liquid in the glass and just inflate it. I hope this is right. <laughs> I, I think this is right. Uh, Google it. Uh, you can just inflate the geometry of the liquid inside of the glass. And as long as it pop pen or penetrates the glass a little bit, it'll uh, render just fine. So we have the liquid sitting inside of the glass here. And in fact, you know what? This one we can demo as well. So a couple of things I want to mention here. Basically, you can see one glass looks nice and one glass looks uh, like a mosaic. Uh, basically, when you're in ZBrush, you can subdivide the hell out of something where you can turn on dynamic and send it over. Um, it may still look a little faceted. And instead of throwing more polygons at the problem, what is much easier to do is just uh, go in here and just 
uh, do a quick edit normal, say calculate vertex normals, hit apply. And that'll go ahead and soften all the normals of your objects or soften it based on the angle threshold. Uh, the other cool thing about this is, and it, I won't be able to demo that in this particular instance, but you can leave things super hard edged and then just go in here and fix that with the rounded edge shader. Uh, so if you ever do come in here and it's like, oh, it's faceted or it's faceted and I've got hard edges, you know, go fix the normals, bump up the radius on this rounded edge shader. And it'll probably, in, in my for my needs, it works plenty good. Uh, so that's how I would go through and fix those issues there. And that way I don't have to throw in a billion polygons just for get something smooth. I can throw in something fairly lightweight and uh, just fix the normals, a little rounded edge shader. Don't need to have a built-in bevel or anything and just call it a day. Um, another thing back in the day that I did was uh, I would go through and I would do nano mesh for the bubbles. So in this instance, this is a geometry node. So if you ever drop in, you know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you can drop in beer or champagne uh, and it has the bubbles built in. Uh, and it's pretty simple to set up too. So instead of me having to go through here and just drop in a bunch of nano mesh uh, geometry and then give that a different application, I, I, this is actually nano mesh geometry right through here. Uh, all these little things, I just threw on some nano mesh, just plop those right on uh, along the surface of the glass here. Uh, but inside, this is just a uh, liquid beer. And if I hop into the material graph again, uh, again, this setup is pretty simple. You have the liquid beer and you have the bubble geometry node in here. And you're gonna see whenever you're using a geometry node, you get the little XQ geometry node up here and there will be a little pop up here if you change anything. Uh, even cooler than that, if I hit C, you're gonna see we can pipe in a little bit of a gradient here that tells it where I want the bubbles to concentrate at. So if I want them to be concentrated more at the top, I can dial that up and then I'll go back in here and I'll say, uh, that'll update my bubbles. Of course I do, again, I need to re redo the geometry node. Now you can see they're more concentrated up here. And on the bubbles themselves, same thing with the fuzz we were talking about earlier. You can change the size, the, the variation density and limits and all that kind of stuff in the random seed there. So just make sure you hit execute geometry node when you're done fiddling and uh, it'll pop right up and you're good to go. So again, much easier, much more dynamic to dial in uh, bubbles that way than to go through there with actual pieces of mesh and have to deal with that. So um, go back in here. And again, this is what we we're talking about. There's the gradient. You can dial that in where the bubbles are going to go, the density of those bubbles, and uh, you're good to go. Got nice bubble renders. Uh, and then all you have to do is throw on a little bit of a, 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 a do a little bit of work in post, and then you have a nice uh, ad for a 1972 National Geographic real quick. Uh, this is kind of liquidy. This is basically just a translucent milk shader for a little Westworld live stream that we did. And... Um, kind of mixing you know liquids uh, still uh for this one we have a stuffy shark render where basically it's against zbrush 2021 messing around with the clock dynamics and uh, a few other uh cool features for that release but uh, to get that kind of caustics look you know just drop a plane in here apply some the the what is this liquid water ripples that'll go ahead and displace that plane give you some ripples along that surface throw a, a light through it and then you have like a little you know a little kind of water and light play across the surface of your object there same thing for this. This is kind of another, again, another super quick demo. Skull Island, uh, again, big plane out here, throw in an environment to light it up, uh, drop some ripples on there. And then you have, you know, this kind of quick, again, super quick demo. We're talking in this in this instance here, maybe maybe an hour to get the geometry done and then, you know, 15 minutes to render it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it gets the idea across quickly. You can demo some functionality and you're good to go. Uh, here, we're kind of getting towards uh, a little bit further on. Um, when you're rendering anything, generally you're going to do a little bit of work in post more so than just, you know, throwing a seventies camera filter on it and calling it a day. So what you're going to want to do is render in passes a lot of times. And in this, this is a fairly simple instance of, you know, doing a clown pass. Uh, so you can have easy selection of the different components of your object, and then you can go through and dial those in or, um, kind of punch those up as needed, uh, for any specific areas, add a little bit of glow in here and uh, you know again dial in the materials in post as opposed to uh, in the render um kind of an extreme version of that and you know what if we do want to go through this i'll go ahead and launch photoshop i'm not saying we have to but if we want to um we have a key shot uh kind of a base render here and again super simple base render and then we got you know play with the background a little bit hold on and then uh, go through into your lighting passes if you need to and another cool thing about key uh, zbrush to key shot is you can 
if you have your perspective turned on, it'll throw a camera over. In fact, I think you might be able to bring multiple cameras over into Keyshot, but at least you can bring in the camera you're working with. So you can um, lock that camera down in ZBrush, lock that camera down in Keyshot, do renders from both programs. So if, again, if I want to do a ZBrush render, mix it with a Keyshot render, totally doable. Nothing wrong with that. Same thing with materials. Um, you know, here's the lighting pass kind of uh, comped in later. And then here's a uh, tune material in Keyshot. So we can get some outlines, get some edges. So if we want to scrape up some paint or drop in some dirt into some cavities, I can use this as a mask in Photoshop. And uh, in ZBrush, I can also add that with like a curvature uh, render in ZBrush to kind of grab these edges. But again, the cavities and the edges mix and match those masks as needed in Photoshop. And then there, there is the dirt dialed into the AO. There's the metal edge where again, brought in in post. And then there's your clown pass. You can dial in uh, whatever you need to for these specific things. And then here's the, you know, the final little bird man comp, uh, bird robot comp. And again, you know, fairly super fast model. Um, nothing tremendously amazing going on here. But again, just kind of a quick uh, ideation pass there to kind of dial that in. Um, speaking of, we do have, if I go in here, here's some. I did use, uh, you know, using key because what Keyshot can be really good at is uh, this type of thing where it's like drag and drop, awesome car paint, awesome lights, awesome glass, no problem. Actually super difficult to do in, you know, certain other renders or texturing packages. So if I want to mix something with like Substance Designer or a Substance Painter with Keyshot, with Photoshop, with ZBrush, um, you know, I'm almost always going to do my quick first pass uh, in Keyshot just to grab all the really uh, things that can kind of lag in other areas. I can get those dialed in really quickly. And then, sorry. And then I can hop over here. And then again, I can just start overlaying anything else that I did. And, you know, if I did it in Painter, if I did it in uh, ZBrush or whatever, uh, at least I have that base Keyshot pass to kind of get me the goodies that I need uh, in those areas where Keyshot super shines. Um, this is another example of kind of just doing a quick, you know, again, super fast model of a robot. I guess we can go check it out. Uh, super fast model of a robot during a live stream and then just throwing it right into Keyshot here. So again, let's go ahead and pop that open. Uh, start out with your base render, put some nice materials on there, maybe do a little bit of lighting passes in here. You can get some, you know, just kind of dial in the look you're going for. Uh, you can even use uh, utilities and Keyshot to go through and grab the cavities or grab the AO and dial in uh, different colors and materials into those uh, passes there. And moving right along, sorry, I'm just kind of flipping through a YouTube channel here, but uh, you can go through and you can basically comp all this together, you know, render out your AO here, uh, throw these together in Photoshop. And uh, again, going between Keyshot renders and render passes and ZBrush renders and render passes, throwing them on top of you, sort of seeing what works, uh, doing your Z depth path pass in um, ZBrush in that instance, I think. And then now uh, you can dial that into your lens blur so you have a little bit more control over that depth of field if you need it. Uh, and again, again, super fast, super easy. Go through there and get yourself a nice little uh, creature render uh, and creature model too. This model, again, most of this was like insert mesh creature brushes. So, uh, you know, always, always looking for that easy way out uh, for myself. And here we've got a video. It's a pretty short video. I basically, if we've gone through any of this stuff, I mean, I've got all of this stuff broken down. A lot of it does end up focusing more on, you know, the setup. So here's all the demos I did for ZBrush 2021, like a bunch. And then if you see, you know, for this example, we go through here, let's play real quick. You know, here's the modeling setup, you know, and there's a bunch of things that came out in 2021. Let me skip forward a little bit here. You know, setting up the net, playing a little bit with the clock dynamics, all this stuff. And then at the very end, you'll see Keyshot kick in. So again, I'm doing pretty simple models, nothing crazy going on here. Here's the nano mesh stuff. We're just throwing in for the little light things. Bloop, just plop in some, I guess, you get a couple different ways you could have done that. But there's the little lights in the background here. Again, just kind of playing with the nets, going through here, dialing this in. And here we are in Keyshot. So again, whew, finish my demo. Let's make it look good. So throw it in the Keyshot. You know, do, you know, do my environment lighting, maybe bring in uh, some area lights, change my vertex normals, drop some cloth in where I need it, some glass, foam, paint. Uh, again, here's some cloth dialed in there. Put a little area light in here to kind of pop what I need to play around with. Um, what was that? That aberration that we were talking about a little bit. And hey, there we go. Call it a day. 15 minutes worth of fiddling. And uh, I got something I can I can hand off and get started on the next demo there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and having said all that, 
here's all of the key shot stuff kind of strung together. And I'm just going to kind of talk over this, and maybe pause it. So here's the virtual maquettes I was talking about. Go through here and make it look as if you're a real artist and you're uh, using actual traditional tools. Just go ahead and model them real quick. And then again, drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. Set up your lighting, rotate it around. Boom, done. Um, same thing with this. Again, there's that more studio kind of look. And this is the kind of the lighting setup in the materials they're getting dialed in for the plant here is the little shop of horrors, a little bit of skin, a little bit of translucency, move around those spotlights, kind of get that. Here's, there's the, uh, get the right name for these things. Those are my light maps. I've got a little, I bought a little pack of light maps I can throw in there. And, uh, again, if I have a spotlight or if I have an area light and go through here and add these textures to it with a little bit more, a little touch of realism there. There you go. Play around those camera angles a little bit. Yay. And again, cutting out the modeling parts here, but here's that koi uh, bowl of water, kind of an abused koi now that I look at the setup here. That's not a real one. It's all virtual. No animals were harmed in the making of that. And uh, no stage actresses were harmed in the making of this one. But again, super simple stage setup. You know, you got the practical lights here. Boop, 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 boop. Just throw an area light on there, crank it up. Lights are effectively, and then throw in more lights where you need them up in the scaffolding there. Call it a day, borrow a flower, and boom, there you go. Render, done, next demo. Uh, this is the car, the truck wreck from ZBrush 2021 demo. Um, and this is this one wasn't released. I ended up putting a bunch of Pixelogic decals all over this uh, car wreck, and they're like, eh, maybe, maybe not a great idea to advertise uh, ZBrush uh, in the middle of a car wreck, and I understood that, but. You'll see me drop some decals in there and uh, you know, it's how it's fairly easy to go through there. Use that for the cracks, use that for signage, uh, all sorts of uses for uh, labels, I should say. Even throw different materials on them too, if you want to get a little bit of a layered look there. And then for the mask ball, we've already seen. Again, this is the cloth dynamic release and just literally, again, it's probably getting old by now, but my clutch key shot coming through, drag and drop, uh, call it a day. And then here's the skeptics scene here. Super easy. We played a little bit of, you know, with this, trying to see if uh, I can go a little bit nuts on the material in there, x-ray materials and stuff like that for the, what is that? Crystal ball. A little bit of gradient there, drop in a decal. And this one is just parts, you know, big uh, a mech that we did for a little sizzle video for certain affinity there. Again, super fast, bringing these, uh, you know, modeling these guys out pretty quickly and just drag and dropping um, skin material. Same thing with Earthworm Jim here. Same idea, go through there. This is all key shot render turnarounds. Same thing with death. We'll have a death turnaround as well. And again, that's all just rendered in key shot. So here, you know, again, having a little bit of fun with the look dev and getting the colors and materials dialed in quickly, uh, doing a little bit of light pass. I can make some of that pop. From the background here and there's a little key shot render real quick there's a little bit of anatomy i need to clean up in that arm and then here we got our stuffy shark again playing with the caustics and shining lights through it and seeing if i can get an uh, interesting look with that skull island again drag and drop ripple water materials a little bit of fire call it a day and finally we have again like we already went through the monster and the materials and Again, kind of cleaning it up in post. If I didn't have everything figured out in ZBrush, I can go into Photoshop and you know dial in kind of the meaty, meaty parts of his his face there. And I think that's about it. So basically, and again, I have all of I went through God, it what seems like a decade worth of key shot files, and I found them all on my computer, uh, all that stuff. I also have the the Photoshop. What is this render layers for posts? Here's the Photoshop composite. This is kind of an extreme example of you know, maybe a little too much playing around with uh, layers and stuff, but you're going to see, you know, here's the background, here's the comp itself. And if I dial all of them, let's crank this, up. there we go. So we're going to go all the way through here. Let's see, orange peel here. Yeah, there's the key shot base. Uh, here's a little bit of orange paint thrown on, a little bit of hue set. Here's the base lights, even the base lights individually, you know, a bunch of different lighting passes. Uh, thrown on here just kind of playing around with the look and then even under refine here we got a ton of stuff here's the dirt and uh metal edgeware tossed in there all you know oops, all pulled through you know these masks that we rendered 
And then up here, there's the curvature map that I was talking about, you know, render that out, grab your edges, grab your cavities, and then all the stuff done in post. Um, so we go through there's our clown render. So here's all, and again, this is kind of an, extra, I don't generally do all of this, but there's a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, lighting passes, there's the clown pass. So we can go through here and just grab the sections that we need. And then this, a little bit of lens blur, overlay, color, dodge, exposure. There you go. Call it a day. But yeah, I think that's that's it in a nutshell. Uh, using Keyshot as my go-to crutch for <laughs> time-sensitive demo and live stream awesome. stuff. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, we have some questions, uh, and actually, kind of, I'll, I'll keep you on that topic of the render passes because that's one of the ones uh, that folks are asking about. Can you sort of show in Keyshot how you generate those passes uh, out in in the Photoshop? Yeah, for sure. So the, basically, let me see if I can drop in. Uh, I we can look at the actual uh, file in here, uh, but in order for me to do like a, a ZBrush and Keyshot uh, version of this, let's go in here to the camera. We'll go ahead and just go back to the free camera here. Uh, if I'm gonna do a quick render in here, I can go in here and say just render. And in this render settings, you just look at all these. You can turn on all of these things if you want to and do these render paths. I don't generally use all of them, although now that I see these, maybe I should. Uh, what I would render out for this one is like the diffuse, AO uh, and clown depth and normal sometimes, uh, but these are my three big ones that I usually render out. Um, for me specifically, if I you know, I'll just go ahead and render this out, um, we'll let that churn for a second. Um, you know, it's going to render out uh, your AO, your clown, and your diffuse pass uh, all at once, and then we can throw all that into Photoshop. Uh, once you have that, I'm just trying to see if I have one in here. You know, we can actually, if you wanted to, I can pop open ZBrush and we can. You can send over again, like a camera in ZBrush. I'll just keep to get a grab something simple here. Studio traditional objects max. Yes. So if we have uh, in ZBrush, we have you know I'll just grab I'll just play here, and we have a head, and we want to render this out. Make sure you turn on perspective. So when I send this over, I can again. I can do my uh, BPR passes in ZBrush and capture all of these render passes. So if I did want to go through here and be like, hey, you know what? I just want to do a normal map render pass. Uh, another plugin I like to use a lot, and I have more, I have a, a whole video series on this on YouTube and ArtStation, is the ZBrush compositor. This will bake out a bunch of stuff. So you can send this right over to Substance and it'll bake out your curvature. Um, i trying to think. Curvature is the big one that I grab out of there, but that's another one that'll bake out a bunch of different uh, maps for you. Uh, but if I go back here and I say, again, we'll, you know, okay, let's say this is what we want. Let's say documents, our render's done, document. Uh, and this, you know what? Document, zapling properties. Go ahead and set custom one. And now when I say render, uh, external render a key shot, that'll send it right over into key shot. Super useful. And, oh, it's still, it's still doing its thing here. Uh, whenever this gets done, let's see. Oh, it is done, sorry. It's gotta click the plus sign. Uh, so we've got that render and I'll talk about that in a second. But if we kill this and we say, now let's render in Keyshot, it'll send it right over to Keyshot. And now I can use this camera. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? Uh, this Keyshot camera here, I'm gonna lock it so I don't ever lose it. And then through here, again, you can play around with this, play around with the lighting, play around with the, uh, yeah, the environment in here. Cool. Oops, that's uh, backlight. Sorry, environments. There we go. And again, if you do want to just have just the object in here, environment, color, drop this down. And now we've got uh, kind of a gruesome scene, but uh, we have a head in here. And again, if you want to crank up this brightness or contrast, you can do that. So once you're in here and you go in here to render, and again, you can render out all these uh, different render passes that you want to. You can also hop back into ZBrush and render what you need to in here. Uh, and again, you can just mix and match those all in Photoshop. Uh, in that case, if we go through here and I go to my renderings, I've got, this is what we just rendered. Uh, in here, I've also got my AO EXR. Uh, usually what I'll do is just use a plugin just to kind of open this up. Again, maybe a more elegant way to do this, but image mode, eight bits, don't merge, copy all this. Right in my scene here, drop this down to multiply, maybe throw on, uh, you know, I like to do a little bit of levels, a little bit of hue sat, and then we'll go ahead and alt link these here. So we got our 
AO in here. And then uh, even on this hue set in here, I can say, you know what, let's do uh, colorize. And I can give this maybe a little bit of a blue kind of AO look if I want to, and we can really saturate it, but usually keep it pretty subtle. Uh, and then through here, you can dial in the levels. If it gets a little bit muddy in areas, you can style that back and start your journey to, uh, you know, dropping this stuff in. And here's the clown pass we're talking about. So again, you just hold down shift and drag that on in here. And oops, we'll put this right here at the top, like so. Alt unlink this one. And then this one we can just use, I'm usually pretty lazy. I'll just use the uh, magic wand and just grab what I need. So if I wanna adjust all these blue pieces here, we can just grab those, turn this back off and go in here and say, you know what, let's just adjust the levels on just this here. Let's drop this down so I can yoink. There we go. So we can dial this in. And again, if you wanna do a hue saturation on this one and drop in a colorize on just those parts here, I guess we can go ahead and just control tap this one and then uh, hold on, let's disable this. Hue set, there we go. And then now we can go through here and we can say, I want all that white stuff to have, you know, blue sheen, sheen, or I can even dial this down a little bit and make it all blue or purple or green or whatever I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I, how I would go about doing kind of render layers from Keyshot, from ZBrush, dialing them all in uh, to Photoshop here. Awesome. And they, get, they can get intense, but um, I try to keep it simple. <laughs> Yeah, very powerful stuff. It really kind of shows the the uh, the uh, kind of the, the value of the clown pass. Um, so one person's asking, uh, they're using ZBrush and Keyshot, and how they can best go about sort of adding painted color to their models. So kind of using that that model right there. You yeah. know, uh, do you know they're saying they basically kind of render out in Keyshot and they sort of paint up in Photoshop. How how do you do that? If you kind of want to paint that surface up. Yeah, for sure. Let's do that. Let me uh, <laughs> let me switch this over. Monitor. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so we're in here and we want to paint uh, this up and I want to use this poly paint. So what I'm going to basically do is, you know, we'll turn on X symmetry. I'm going to fill him color, fill object, and we'll give him a little bit of that Joker treatment. So um, go ahead and oops, turn on RGB. So I'm literally going to paint in ZBrush. You can paint on the vertex color. Uh, so we can go through here and we can, you know, paint whatever you want. So we've got green skin, we've got uh, red lips, and you know what, let's do some yellow eyeballs in here. And now we have poly paint. So, and again, like on the crane model that we saw earlier, you know, that, and uh, I'm trying to remember if we had any uh, interesting ones here, right? You know, this was all, this is a little more subtle, nuanced poly paint in here, you know, little veins and reds, the oranges, the purple. So it's not so obvious. In fact, everything I send over usually is poly painted, you know, like these, you know, he's got some purples and pinks and stuff on there. So it won't be uh, this obvious, but uh, same idea. So let me make sure we just go ahead and. I mean, yeah, I could actually send that right over on top of this one if I wanted to. But uh, what we can do is we can say, let's make sure our render key shot is on, send it right over to key shot. And this is what we were talking about when, and it'll bring in uh, the, the uh, poly paint, no problem. So if I go through here and I say, let's go take a look. So here's the imported matte cap material. So I'll go into the material graph, you're gonna see uh, we got a little legacy node. Let's go ahead and upgrade that to the new node here. Let's delete this old one. So in here, we have the matte cap. So if I don't want to apply that matte cap, I can literally just turn that off. And then we just, just have the vertex color here. Um, and in this, these are the instances too, where if you want to keep your matte, your poly paint and bring it, bring in another color, it's pretty simple. If I want to go in here to like, you know what, let's just do um, plastic, hard, shiny, uh, white. I'm going to hold down Alt drag that on, that'll change, that'll swap the material out from underneath uh, that poly paint. But if you go into material graph, you're gonna see my, my poly paint is turned, is still plugged right in that plastic. Um, if you did wanna do, for example, skin, uh, this is where, again, if, if your material does have textures, that's where I was going through here and saying, you know what, I wanna keep these textures, but I wanna swap this color with this poly paint here. And then you just gotta pump this through to your surface. You don't need this anymore. And now you've got, um, oops, plug it into the surface. And now you've got a translucent skin version of what we're working on with the poly paint. And that's where you go in here and you say, you know what, let's do five of this and then specular, we'll drop this down to like 0.2 and bump. Up. So now you've got a translucent. Well, if you wanted to really go in here and play with translucency, I'd at least pump this up the product, but also uh, jewelry 
you know, if you really want to play around with those settings, or again, if you want to do gear with poly paint, you can do that as well. You can go through here and we'll do, uh, let's say, transparency distance of one. So now we got a, a beer head in here. If you want to play around with those bubbles, again, just a little. This is where if you, again, you want your lighting turned up to jewelry so you can get the nice caustics uh, going through here. But if you're just kind of playing around uh, with the overall look, I'm just going to drop down in here to product renderer. And again, we can play around with that material graph and dial in, um, so clean those up a little bit, dial in those uh, bubbles here. Uh, and this is where, when we were talking about the textures, you can go in here to your color gradients. And this is where you can control the bubbles and where they end up showing up. So if you tap C on here, um, that's the direction they're going in. So we're going to say part move texture. We can go ahead and say, I want the bubbles to be towards the top, collecting all in there. Totally cool. And then we'll go ahead and tap C to turn that off. And then now this is where you can kind of play around with, you know, the amount of bubbles and the density of the bubbles in here. So we, I'm just guessing at numbers here because this wasn't actually done to scale or anything. This is just kind of stuff thrown together. So uh, you can start dialing in uh, some bubbles up here. And we can switch over to GPU if we need to. There you go. So now you can kind of play around with these things. But again, super fast, super fun, super awesome. easy. Very cool. Hey, while I have you here, can you just uh, bring up the cloud, the cloud library real quick? You were kind of mentioning oh, yeah. kind of how easy it is to kind of grab stuff from there. Um, oh, do you, and, and do you find yourself going there quite a bit? I live and die by this thing. Like literally, if I don't immediately, <laughs> I don't know what this says about me as a, an artist or a lack of artist, but uh, if I don't find it immediately over here, like again, when I was talking about like, oh, is there a bronze? And if there isn't, I'm a, the first thing I do, go in here, bronze. And 99 times out of 100, I'll grab what I need. And that was another example too, where I was like, oh crap, pencil. Do they have graphite in here? And, uh, oh, they did. I don't know what happened to it, but uh, I, I was able to find that graphite. I was able to download it. It's in there I mean, somewhere. Yeah, you just mentioned the H there on the graphite. Oh, uh, there, yeah. Let's see, again, uh, artists that can't spell. <laughs> and have you, have you used the model library at all? We had the model library recently. You ever go in there to kind of just do a little, a, a little fun scene dressing? You know, if I wasn't so fond of modeling my own stuff, I probably would, but like, because that, that's like half the fun for me. But you know what, now that you mention it, if I was doing more world building stuff, or like you, like you said, if I'm setting up these types of scenes in here, where I've got you know like this kind of stuff, I absolutely could have gone through that model shop and been like, what 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 am I missing, or what what else can I throw in here really quickly to kind of spice it up uh, a little bit? But you know, my my bread and butter is modeling, so I, I my first inclination wouldn't be to go in there. But now that you mentioned it, yeah, why not? And then you you were talking about sort of um, someone's asking on on sort of the um, the uh, the beer bubbles, you know, obviously you can do the, the, the true bubbles and you also kind of showed how you can sort of fake the bubbles too, with sort of the, the, um, the nano mesh as well. Someone was asking about that. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a, I, I have a few live streams on that, but I can just do it real quick. So if I go through here, let's get this here. So let's model a mug real quick. We'll do a quick group by normals here. We'll get rid of this here. And actually, you know what, this will be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about, uh, let's do this bevel here. So we have our cup, basically. I'm going to hit Control W, make this all in poly groups, make it so you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to go through here. I'm going to say uh, extrude poly group all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that top edge uh, nice and sharp. And you know what? Let's do this. Let's say uh, flip and then W, Control tap this. And I'm going to take this in here so I can actually bring, I'm going to bring that base up. Because you know when people are making glass, they tend to leave that base nice and thick at the bottom. So we're going to dial that in. And now what I can do is say control or crease PG. So I'm going to turn on dynamic here and that'll be like, okay, I can start smoothing uh, my edges out. You know what? You get a little bit of scalloping here. Let's do a quick, there we go. So as I'm smoothing in here, I can be like, okay, um, here's my object. Now I want to do a little bit of liquid. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this off. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to take this one here, delete hidden. Let's go ahead and flip. And I'm going to say, extrude a polygroup ball so we've got some liquid in here and we'll call that a day uh, let's go ahead and flip this back sorry so on this one uh you know what let's do now that i think about it i don't want that liquid to go all the way to the brim so i'm going to say delete hidden um so if i wanted to so extrude polygroup ball and actually we don't want to extrude do we we just want to flip i'm not making 
liquid with thickness, I'm making liquid with a cap. So close, convex hole here, control W. So now I'm gonna say, you know, D for dynamic, go ahead and just run a crease tolerance on this liquid. Now, what I mentioned before is of turn on transparency, this is flush, you know, with this um, outer skin here. So I'm gonna say, you know, let's do a quick group by normals. And I'm gonna say extrude poly group all, hold down shift. I was going to kind of pull that into the glass just a tiny bit. So when I apply the liquid material, um, it'll appropriately react or inter interact with the uh, glass here. So on this one, again, I can keep cranking up my dynamic. Uh, and again, dynamic will work um, with key shots. So I can literally just send this over. So I'll crank this up. But again, if it ends up being faceted, I can just fix the normals. And on this crease up here, uh, instead of adding more geometry and overhead, uh, what I can do is just use the round edge shader. Uh, as far as like the, <laughs> the, the, the fake bubbles that I would do, uh, either on the surface of the glass or in the interior of the liquid here, basically all that would do is, you know what, I'm gonna say, yeah, that's fine. Uh, all I would do is go in here. And I guess, you know what, I need a bubble. So what I'm gonna have to do is go in here to a sphere, edit mode, make poly mesh. Yeah, that's the right line. We, we don't need them that high res. I'm gonna go through here and you know what, we'll do eight and eight. Make poly mesh 3D, B, create insert mesh new. This will be our little particle that we're gonna use. And then just one more thing I gotta do, brush, create, oops. And then do uh, create nano mesh brush. So now on the surface or the interior of my liquid, what I can do, I'll go ahead and just duplicate this off and just show this one here. Uh, I can say, Let's go grab that latest brush we have here. We say insert nano mesh, all polygons. So when I do that, what that's gonna allow me to do is just start putting in bubbles. Uh, of course, you don't usually want your bubbles this well, uh, this regular. Uh, another thing you don't want is your bubbles to go out from the object. So if I go in here to nano mesh, you're gonna see, um, you can do like a Z offset. You can kind of stick them around. I'm gonna do a quick flip here because we want our bubbles to go on the inside and I wanna be able to see it. So easy enough, drop them in here. Um, and we'll drop the size down a little bit and we'll also just do a little bit of random distribution here. Uh, and you can use this to kind of, <laughs> with, with the top, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and turn on NMesh off. And we'll go ahead and unflip this because what I really don't like is that. I don't need uh, bubbles coming from there. So if I turn this back on, there we go. So now we just basically have bubbles in here. We can say, flip this back and we'll go ahead and change that Z offset and also the Z variance. You know what, X, Y, and Z variance is probably fine. So now you can kind of dial in some bubbles. And again, like I said, I can go in here to inventory one to mesh, isolate this, delete hidden. So now I've got some bubbles I can send over, but it's a little, it's not quite as, it's a little more work and not as dynamic. I can't just pass a gradient through a nano mesh and put these bubbles where I need it. Um, oh, also, if you want to use this for stadium lights, that's what I did as well. Uh, but you know what, we'll go ahead and turn on dynamic, maybe smooth it once. And then when I send this on over to Keyshot, let's go ahead and get rid of beer head here. We can send this on over. So again, render Keyshot, send it on. And then we'll just set this up really quickly. Should be pretty easy, knock on wood. Uh, and again, I, I gave myself uh, a little bit of, I gave myself a little bit of uh, things to work through on this one. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna select the glass. And the first thing we're gonna do is, We'll do a solid glass, white should be fine. And then in here, let's go ahead and make our product lighting here. Uh, so again, we have some problems here. We may need to go in here and fix our normals. Super easy to do, just calculate them, apply, but we still have that super sharp rim here. Uh, so that's where we can go through. We can use, instead of adding more geometry, play around with this round edge radius and it'll go through and kind of dial uh, that edge in for you. Um, as far as the, the liquid goes, we can just put in, here, right onto here and play around with Give that a second. And let's see now, whenever I'm doing liquid and things with reflection, reflect, <laughs> reflect, re reflections, uh, I usually drop in a real environment here. Even if I don't see it, um, I like to have something in there that's a little more realistic here. So we've got our beer in here. It's a little dark. We'll just say, dial that in, Ooh, a little whiskey look there. And now you can see uh, we have that. And, and then our bubbles in here, we can go through the, the, the geometry. That's kind of cool. So you have beer just kind of sitting on space, uh, but also the geometry bubbles that you have in here, you can go through. And on this, in this instance, gosh, I'm not even sure what I would, I guess I would do. You know what I would probably do? 
Um, it, again, not super elegant. What I'm probably going to do in this situation is just grab like a basic white glass. I'm not certain that that's the way to go about that. And eh, you know what? That's not going to work as well. I have to remember. It's been so long since I've done it because I don't really do that anymore. I guess I can. I, I would pick and pick pick something in there that would actually get those to show up, but. Long story short, what I would really do nowadays, and again, I don't really remember what I would do for those anymore because I would simply go in here to the material graph and just dial in uh, these bubbles. So, I mean, if you want to do your own, you know, nanomesh geometry for like liquid droplets, you can do the exact same thing. Just stick those nanomeshes to your object here. Of course, you're probably going to want to dial in streaks and condensation and stuff like that in the texture, uh, but at the same time, uh, pretty simple uh, to go through here and just use these bubbles. Honestly, yeah, if I'm going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and that was that was. I'm impressed by how fast it all together, but it definitely shows that probably just the bubbles would be easier. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can do it in ZBrush, and again, there might be instances where you need stadium lighting or something where this would come yeah. in handy for like a basketball scene. Uh, but for bubbles, yeah, just use bubbles. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're at the top of the hour here, so I'm going to take the screen uh, from you real quick, just so I can sort of show folks um, kind of what's upcoming here. Um, and so, uh, um, yeah, so that was wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. That was really, really great to sort of just see kind of how your workflow is today and all the different ways that you use uh, KeyShot with ZBrush and some really, really impressive work there. So a big thank you uh, to you for coming today. Uh, reminder, we have one more session here. We're in the final day of KeyShot World 2021 virtual edition. Uh, so at 2 p.m. today, so in about one hour, we'll have our final session, which is Leveraging Key Shot for Eye-Catching Product Shots. Uh, that's brought to us by Tyler Anderson and Jack Marple from Offsite. Um, big thank you. Reminder again for everyone who didn't see, uh, uh, Michael showed very briefly there, sort of the GPU. Uh, we are giving away a A6000 today uh, from the wonderful folks at NVIDIA. So a big thank you to them. Uh, reminder, anyone who attends all three sessions or if you attend any of the three sessions, uh, you're entered in. We'll pull someone out and we'll announce them at the end of the 2 p.m. session. Um, so, again, big thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, Stratasys was, uh, had a great, did, did a great job today at our, our 10 a.m. session, so thank you to them. Uh, Vario as well, uh, Render Weekly, Design Burger, uh, and GoPro. Um, so, uh, Michael, any uh, uh, final parting words for us today? I mean, thanks for having me. And again, uh, my, my go-to crutch is got to be, you know, Keyshot, getting it done fast, getting it done effectively. Uh, thanks so much for making the product because, boy, it makes my life a lot easier. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you again for your time today. It was really informative. Uh, and again, thank you, everyone, for, for attending. And we'll hopefully see you all again in about an hour.